Tens of millions of us have already voted in this election, and Steve Hartman catches up with a few of them at a place rich with history. How grateful they must be, the people, women mostly, who flock here to Mount Hope Cemetery in Rochester, New York, just to stand in her presence. It was really amazing. Like I wasn't just reading from a textbook anymore. I was with her. Emma Mitiga came to the grave of Susan B. Anthony for what has become a Rochester tradition, showing the suffragist in a very tangible way that her work was not in vain. After Anthony died in 1906, her grave went mostly unnoticed until four years ago when about 10,000 people showed up to put their I Voted stickers on her headstone, a gesture that came with unintended consequences. Unfortunately, the gummy residue of all that affection was damaging the marble. So this year, they covered her headstone with a plexiglass sleeve, allowing for layers of tributes for generations to come. She worked so hard her whole life. Sarah Compagna brought her daughter, Clara. She died not even knowing if it would happen. We're not gonna have children that'll take those next steps for us if we don't educate them now. Karen Moretti says we also need to educate a lot of adults, like her. Yes, I haven't always been so passionate. It's almost like we took it for granted. Were you in our car on the way coming here? <laughs> because I said to her, I can't believe I was so clueless for many parts of my life, and now I am so passionate. During our day at the gravesite, Thank you, Susan B. Anthony. We saw that passion take many forms from downright jubilation to overwhelming emotion. The only constant was the way people put on their stickers, all of them with such tenderness as if rubbing liniment into the injustice. And it was healing, which is why I believe voting should always be a two-step process. First a ballot and then a nod to all those who made this sacred right possible.